Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. We are live on location in our backyard because it's very nice in South Florida right now. It is 82 degrees, Mm -hmm. and we thought we would broadcast from the backyard. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so a lot's happened for a weekend. So on Thursday, and I guess everybody saw it on Friday for the most part, but on Thursday, Tucker Carlson released his interview with Alex Jones, which was phenomenal, very interesting. I talked a lot about that on two of my streams over the weekend, so I'm not going to go through the Tucker interview again. You can go back and watch my streams on YouTube about that. I did two live streams on YouTube about Mm -hmm. Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson. And then... Yesterday, Saturday, Elon Musk did a poll on Twitter. Should he allow Alex Jones back on Twitter? Mm. X, 70% of people said yes. And then Sunday morning, Alex Jones is back on Twitter, X. And right now, as we are speaking, we were just listening to this. We broke away to do the podcast here. But Elon Musk is hosting a Twitter Spaces with Alex Jones and a whole bunch of famous people, including Vivek Ramaswamy, talking about everything involving Alex Jones. Let me ask you a question. You have, and I'm glad he's back on X, because I I don't agree with his Sandy Hook thing, but I, you know, I think, I don't think people should be banned from that stuff. And, you know, but um, all these things are happening. It just seems like Trump is out of this loop. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Like he's not, Involved as he used to be, it's all happening with because social of Trump. media, no. or you it's, don't think these people all getting together, like Vivek, Alex, Tucker, that they are a threat to him at all because no, he's he's like removed threat. himself from this. No, no, no. Well, he's on another level than they are. Right. Okay. So he should not be a part of the Twitter spaces okay. with them. He, he could do. do a, he should be on Twitter. He, uh, he could do a one-on-one Twitter spaces with Elon or a one-on-one with Alex Jones, but he shouldn't be in this mob of 12 people like he's the right. equal of some of the people in that group but the thing about okay all this talk about alex jones and uh different people that have been banned and deplatformed that are getting back on now this is all happening because of trump but here here's the thing i was listening to the twitter spaces mm. and um alex jones says that they they silence us and ban us so that they can lie about what it is that we're saying that's true but there's there's a bigger picture to it okay mm-hmm. And this this globalism that we're going through right now is not new, okay? It, it may be an overdrive. It's not new. They've been doing this pretty much all of our lives. It started really with the Second World War and the aftermath of World War II. Yes, the military-industrial complex. And what's happening is, see, with the internet, the internet, I know for a lot of people, they don't know a world without the internet, but... What the internet did when it started becoming big in the early 90s and then social media and then what we have, everything that we have now. What's happened is the globalists have been around since 1945, but with the internet, they lost control of the narrative and the messaging and they lost control of the people with with Trump. So all these things that are happening mm-hmm. is about control over the – all this deplatforming, control over the flow of information, control over people so they can do everything that they want to do. And well, Trump was really the first one – the reason he's such a – one of the reasons he's such a threat, and this just occurred to me, is because he was really the first one to point out the fake news and get people thinking that you can't trust the national yeah. news – at all, and to qu- he's really what started people questioning everything so much. Before him, there were some people on the fringe that would question a lot of things and be like conspiracy yeah. this, but now it's gone mainstream where a majority of people, even on the left, doubt and question the media. I mean, now the media is complicit because they keep lying to everybody, but yeah. before Trump, nobody really understood that well, to the extent. What, so he's a threat in that regard. So, too. so yeah. So all these people that have been deplatformed and not everyone that's been deplatformed is back. And even Alex Jones is still permanently banned from all the other platforms. He's just back on Twitter. Um, the, the reason that the deplatforming happened is the same reason that people are being replatformed. And it's all because of Trump and what happened when they came down on everyone banning everyone mm-hmm. That, like they were doing and restricting everyone, they've gone, they've, 
they they went too far, and they've even realized they've gone too far, and that's why these things are happening. Now, the one thing though about Trump, yeah. Trump really needs to get back on Twitter. I agree. Tw- you know, it's it's an it's an amazing thing because Twitter Twitter was around, but Trump made Twitter like the the this voice of record, and then we had this Twitter mob that would cancel people, mm-hmm. and and all those things happen. You guys know everything that happened with that, and then. You know, when Trump got banned and deplatformed from everything, you know, and when when Trump got deplatformed, it was the worst of all. I don't think anyone should be deplatformed. You know, it's free speech. But when Trump was deplatformed from Twitter and everything else Mm -hmm. was on January 6th, he was president of the United States and there was a crisis going on and they cut off lines of communication to the president of the United States, to the American people out of the White House. Not only was he cut off of social media and the internet, the mainstream television media would not even air him because I remember they would say, well, we can't, the president of the United States is coming on. We must cut away because he could call on his people to do something. Right. So what it, what had happened with all the tech giants and the, and the mainstream corporate media is they cut it. I wouldn't say it was a coup. They, they think that we had a wild madman in the white house they still and, think that about him. And they encircled him in the White House and cut off lines of communication like he was Hitler in the bunker in Berlin it's incredible. in 1945. And they went too far. And people have realized that. And and when you look at the polls of Trump, the um the polls are so heavily in his favor, the forces against Trump, they've had to lighten up a little bit. Now, this thing with with Alex Jones. It'll be very interesting to see how Alex Jones handles himself because I was telling you guys this on my Friday stream on YouTube. I I never have really listened to Alex Jones very much. I don't listen to a lot of other shows. Are you going to start listening to him I'm going to start listening to him now, um, well, because he's like the center of the world right now of media attention. Yeah, he's having a big comeback. So Alex Jones is going to be the driver of the narrative for a while, so I'm I'm going to— but I want to I want to listen to him. I'm more interested to see how he handles this fame because when I saw him on Tucker la- on uh, fr- I watched it Friday uh, Thursday night. I watched most of it, and then Friday morning before I went on the air, I finished watching. It's about a 90 minute interview, and Alex Jones was much calmer than I had seen him the last time I really saw him, which was years ago. So now that he's back mm-hmm. and. He- He's like the most talked about man in America right now because of Tucker Carlson. It really shows you the power of Tucker Carlson and and, yeah. the, and the importance. He's like revalidated him. Yeah, and the importance of Twitter because this happened because Tucker interviewed him on Twitter. Now mm-hmm. everyone's talking about Alex Jones because Tucker Carlson interviewed him on Twitter. So Tucker Carlson is the most prominent, influential journalist in America. Twitter is the most um, – influential media it's it's social media so it's part of media so twitter is the most influential media source in the world mm-hmm, right now mm-hmm. and alex jones is the most talked about man in the world right now in fact at the last count he was gaining 1200 followers on twitter per minute which is probably about as much as the system Incredible. can handle so you know, so Trump needs to get back on Twitter because, I agree, because because Twitter is where it's at. I agree. He's running a very different campaign, which is fine than the last two. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, uh, I think it's good sometimes to shift your strategy. Um, but I, I think he needs to be on it. But maybe that's part of his strategy. Maybe he's really wants to separate himself from all these other people, um, like you said, and rise above it. But I, I think he should be on Twitter, but I, you know, we, we've said that for a long time now. Well, I, I'm starting to think what president Trump is doing because the, he, he's running a perfect campaign in the primaries. He's beating everybody, right? He's already won the Republican primary with you. Yeah. And, and it, we're just a few weeks away next month until the Iowa caucus and then everything snowballs. Um, Maybe maybe he's staying off Twitter now because he's doing so well. Why go go over there and do that and run the possibility of messing things up? Because the the left and the fake news, they're well, reacting. Yeah, right now he's doing great. So you're right. Why yeah, why change that? Yeah, their reaction to Alex Jones starting tomorrow on Monday is unpredictable. They'll either ignore it or have complete meltdowns. What do you think they're gonna do? 
I think they're going to ignore him. Um, I they think they don't want to validate him the, or Tucker. The, the the cable news, which is the you know the mainstream media, the mainstream media are so fed up with Twitter because Elon Musk has yeah. taken their control about it, but they really hate Alex Jones and. Um, Look, that, that Sandy Hook stuff is going to follow him forever. Oh, he'll be – he, every interview he does I don't for know life, he'll have to he explain went down that. that road. It was a big mistake, and it was crazy. But, but you know, um, he's moving on from it. People are obviously moving on from it. He's a voice that people want to listen to. Uh, he's getting all these followers. But what I'm worried about is – I don't know if I'm worried, but him and Tucker and Benny Johnson and all these guys are going to get behind Vivek – is that going to be a problem? Well, okay. well that's he's, okay. He's all in that's with the these next guys part. now. Okay, so uh, Alex, definitely going to run as an independent. Alex, Alex Jones is going to every interview he does for the rest of his life. Sandy Hook's going to get mentioned. It's going to be in his obituary. Sandy Hook. Okay, so he is forever branded with that. That's just the reality. He'll be explaining that and for the rest of his life. But now this Twitter Spaces thing. What I did not like about it was uh it has it has a lot of people you know in it jack that are not just listening but part of it to speak jack posobiec and a lot of other, a lot of people but vivek ramaswamy is a part of it and i was talking on my uh, saturday youtube live stream which you guys should watch it's about megan kelly and it, it was a very good live stream i covered a lot of stuff but one of the things i got into is this leaked out the libertarian party of iowa their leaders have said that they have spoken with Vivek Ramaswamy about nominating him as the Libertarian Party candidate for president of the United States. And he was asked about it, and he said he would be honored if they did it. You know? Of course. So of course he's going to do it. it he look, doesn't want to leave this behind. He's having too much fun. Yeah, so it, it looks like Vivek Ramaswamy is – very likely going to be the Libertarian Party candidate for yeah. president, which will be a third party – conservative candidacy, which I, hurt Trump. I don't I, think is a good thing. There were people in your chat because you were talking about it on the radio show, and a lot of people are saying it'll hurt Biden. How is this going to hurt Biden? Libertarians Explain are this conservative. To me. This is going to hurt yeah. Trump, just like Ross Perot hurt George Bush. I don't know if it's going to hurt him enough where he won't win, Yeah, but the but you never it's know. Not good. It's it's not good. It could it could put a, a, a serious dent Li libertarians, in him. Libertarians are strict conservatives okay and and if there's a th the libertarian party always has a candidate but most of the time they're fringe vivek ramaswamy is so popular with millennials and generation z that if yeah. you if he were running as a libertarian party candidate for president he would take a chunk of the younger vote and that's a, that's a fact it doesn't anybody who thinks it would hurt biden well, uh, Democrats keeps, Democrats don't vote libertarian. Conservatives vote libertarian, which is a waste of a vote, by the way. Trump keeps praising him. He said he won the debate, the yeah. last debate. Yeah. He keeps elevating him. I don't know if that's a good strategy or a bad strategy. Does it make it seem like he doesn't see him as a threat? Because Trump really goes after people that are a threat in some way. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's a good strategy because it's like, oh, you know, he's doing great. He's this. Um, maybe he's planning on making him his VP. No, it's you know, okay. who That's knows okay. what he's thinking, but, the, but he, but he hasn't criticized him at all. No, and it's the opposite. Because, Do you think that's a good or bad? Trump hasn't criticized Ramaswamy because he's so popular with young people. He doesn't want to start a thing with him right now, but there'll come a point where he'll have to Rama Vivek Ramaswamy. I don't trust this guy. If, no. if Trump pulls him into his circle, I'll, I'll do whatever, I'll do whatever Trump tells us to, but I don't I was really disturbed when I turned on the Twitter spaces with Elon Musk and Alex Jones and it was Vivek that was talking. I hardly heard Alex. They eventually cut him off. Oh yeah, so, he never stops. So why is Vivek Ramaswamy at the heart of this Twitter spaces exactly. with Alex Jones and Elon Musk today? Well, that's what I'm saying. They're all like forming this group. And Trump's like on the outside, he, it, it, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. And and it concerns me a little bit what's going to happen. I think he's definitely going to run as an independent. And he might have all these guys on his side. I don't know if that'll matter. Well, he's got a Maybe lot of not. money. He's got a lot of he's money. He's got a lot of money. And he's very, um, you know, uh, confident and well-spoken, says a lot of the right things. A lot of people I like him. I don't trust him at all. And I think he is going to pull some votes 
from Trump if he in runs the primaries. As a, if he and, runs as a— I think he's a threat. I don't know if it's a big threat or a little he, threat, but he's definitely a bit of a threat. If he runs as a libertarian, he's not going to win. Okay, I'm not saying he's going to win. There's, it's a hopeless thing. No, but it'll thing. help Biden. But he will take votes away from Trump if he runs as the Lib- Libertarian Party nominee. Okay, and it, th- that's true. He won't take my vote or most of you. But young people, millennials, look, look at look at all these people. He's got like Benny Johnson helping yeah. him out. So I I think it's a it's I think it's a, he's a big problem. We never heard of this guy until like a year or so ago. And I, I don't understand why cons- uh, so many conservatives all of a sudden are so excited about a guy from the pharmaceutical industry, which is know. where he made his money. He has a lot of energy. He says a lot of the right things. Mm. Um, he hones in Mill- on things millennials that people care about. Lo- the, the, the thing he's got is millennials love other millennials. They're, they're like ageism bigots, okay? They don't like older people. They don't like younger people. They, millennials think um, millennials are running the world and doing everything. They think everyone else is either too young or too old and that the world is theirs. And there's there's a lot of strange things going on. And and Vivek Ramaswamy, when I heard him speaking in that Twitter spaces with Alex Jones and Neil Monks, I'm thinking, oh, now I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. And those of you that are Patreon supporters, remember to go to the Patreon page. There's exclusive things there, including commercial free editions of all of our podcast episodes. So make sure you take advantage of all the perks and everything that you have available to you as a Patreon supporter. And one of those perks, our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout out on each and every podcast episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Arctic Fox, Heather, David, Richard, and Maria in Texas. Now, if you'd like to become a top uh, or a Patreon supporter or a top Patreon supporter, there's a link in the episode description. There's also a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com, to our Patreon page. So share your thoughts in the comments on whatever platform you're listening to us on about Vivek Ramaswamy right here at the mm-hmm. center of this out here here's Alex Jones's big debut back in society and Vivek Ramaswamy's hogging up the air in it let yeah. us he hogs the air wherever he is yeah so he he likes to do that i yep. mean he he definitely loves the attention and loves uh talking and but you know he's still i thought he'd fade away by now but he's still you know, has a platform and people are still listening he's becoming more popular so let us know in the comments what you think about that and everything else we've talked about in this first segment. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Back after this. Are you a fan of riddles? How about quizzes? Do you love testing your knowledge and solving brain teasers? Then check out Quiz Whiz Tube 57 on YouTube, your destination for all things quiz, game, and riddle related. Quiz Whiz Tube 57 on YouTube have a wide range of engaging content, from car logo quizzes to history challenges, tech trivia to geography brain teasers, and that's just the beginning. How about deciphering emojis or logos? They've got that too. Riddles, brain teasers, song guessing games, even quizzes about food and animals. Animals. There's something for everyone at Quiz Whiz Tube 57 on YouTube. New videos are posted all the time, so there's always something new to test your brain. Join the community of quiz enthusiasts. Subscribe, like, and share the channel with all your friends. And you can take the challenges together. Go to YouTube right now and subscribe to Quiz Whiz Tube 57 and get ready for endless fun, excitement, and brain teasing challenges. Quiz Whiz Tube 57 on YouTube, where knowledge meets entertainment. Start watching right now. Brace yourself for a journey into the darkest corners of human nature with the Mortal Musings Podcast, available wherever you get your podcast. Join host Neil and Megan each week as they travel to the chilling world of true crime and macabre stories. From French socialites with hidden secrets to chilling tales from death row, they leave no stone unturned. They also bring you the strange and intriguing stories of oddities that will leave you questioning your very reality. Each episode of the Mortal Musings Podcast is a role 
roller coaster ride through the bizarre and unsettling. New episodes drop every Wednesday. The Mortal Musings podcast is on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and all podcast platforms. If you crave the dark, the mysterious, and the utterly bizarre, you'll want to add the Mortal Musings podcast to your podcast playlist. The Mortal Musings podcast with host Neil and Megan. We take the cases seriously, but not ourselves. Available wherever you get your podcast. Is your computer running slow, filled with viruses, broken? If you think you need a new computer, don't buy one until you talk to the computer repair experts at PCFixTX.com. With over two decades of experience, PCFixTX.com has the skills and knowledge to diagnose and repair your computer issues. And that can save you a lot of money. PCFixTX.com have a wide range of services beyond computer repair. They can back up your data. Need a professional website for your business? They can design it. Have an app idea? They can make that happen, too. PCFixTX.com is your one-stop shop for all things tech. They can help with virus removal. They provide top-notch SEO services. They can even design eye-catching logos. With over two decades of experience, their passionate team can solve your tech problems and do it at prices that won't break the bank. PCFixTX.com do it all. Computer repair, website design, online classes, fraud prevention, and more. Book your appointment online at PCFixTX.com or call them directly. Directly, 210-401-0302, pcfixtx.com. From author Israel Ruiz comes an incredible story of love, faith, and unwavering commitment. Resilience, how mental health tore through our marriage. Available on Amazon. In Resilience, meet Israel and Katie Ruiz. In the darkest of times, they found the light, proving that even in the face of mental health challenges, love can conquer all. Resilience isn't just about their struggles, but the invaluable lessons they've learned along the way. It's a testament to the power of faith, the unwavering support of family and friends, and the resilience of the human spirit. Resilience offers hope, inspiration, and encouragement to those facing similar challenges because no one should ever have to face life storms alone. Discover the strength that comes from love and faith in resilience, how mental health tore through our marriage. From author Israel Ruiz, available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and Kindle Unlimited. This book is perfect for book clubs. Order your copy today and embark on a journey of hope and healing. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Oh, um, one last thing on Alex Jones back on Twitter, X. Um, Laura Luma put this out on Twitter this morning. She called Alex Jones this morning about being back on Twitter. She woke him up and she called him and Alex, he said he didn't know he'd been, was back on yet because he was sleeping. And then he didn't, he told Loomer, he didn't know how to log in that he and all of his guys have all been deplatformed from Twitter for so long. They're not even sure how to log in. Mm. So I don't know if they had to go to Elon Musk to get some help to do that. It was, it was kind of funny, but Laura Loomer has a story today that she wrote, and it's on um, her Loomer.com website, but you can see it on her Twitter. She tweeted it, and it's about Nikki Haley. Uh, Nikki Haley's top donor has been exposed as a Ukrainian billionaire Mm. and key Zelensky ally. His name is Jan Coem, okay, and and this this – I, I was telling you guys last week, Nikki Haley is more dangerous than even Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton, and I, and I know that sounds crazy to a lot of people. We all, everybody knew about Hillary Clinton. Okay, she's a crook. She gave the uranium, sold the uranium to Russia. All that stuff. Everybody knows about the Clinton and everything they did in Arkansas and everything else. Nikki Haley, a lot of people, millions of people, don't know how bad of a person she is. I guess she made a lot of these connections in the U.N. because she's all in with Ukraine, which is obviously very corrupt, and they're paying her to push this war. And that's really her main focus is keeping this war going. She's a warmonger. All wars and going. She wants all wars she's, going. She's profiting yeah. off of this, and uh, she sold her soul to these Well, people. Nikki Haley, this is what happened with Nikki Haley, okay? She's well-known 
right? Because she, she was a very high profile governor of South Carolina, and then Trump made her the UN ambassador. And she had a lot of financial problems. So these evil doers of the military industrial complex recruited somebody that has a famous name, that, peop- that, that has a lot of connections. And they, not only did they bail her out, they made her a millionaire, I think, eight times over the last time I heard. She's worth $8 million. Yeah, she's going to make more money, and, you know. Yeah. And what, what she really is is a spokesperson, a television spokesperson for the war machine. Yeah. And she just doesn't want to keep all these wars going. She wants to create new wars and get those going, yeah. too, because that's who she works for. I mean, she's, she's basically won this forever lottery ticket from the military industrial complex. And Nikki Haley should be nowhere near government. I hope that she goes out of this race so humiliated that she's not useful to these people anymore because she's, she's young enough to come back. She's very, you know, these pundits on television, I learned this like about 10 or 12 years ago. I didn't realize that these pundits you see on television that are retired military people, retired lieutenant generals, retired colonels and all this stuff. Most every one of them works for a military industrial complex company. And they have these gigs giving their expert opinions on Fox or CNN. They're really pushing the agenda that helps the, the, the war machine company that they work for. That's mm-hmm. their real job. And that's what Nikki Haley is. Nikki Haley is, is that. And I remember when George Bush was running in 2000, the, uh, one of the heads of the NRA said, oh, when George Bush is president, we'll have a desk right next to the Oval Office. People made a big deal about that. I, I get Okay. With Nikki Haley in power, terrible warmongers, war profiteers are controlling the government. She is a puppet. She is not a free thinker or a free person. She is owned. She is bought. She is paid for by these um, military industrial complex people. And, and so far as this Ukrainian billionaire, I thought it was illegal for candidates to accept donations from foreigners. I thought that was a crime. And yeah. the, the media are really pushing Nikki Haley hard, yeah. especially Fox. I mean, they are really, they love her. They're pushing her. She doesn't her. have a chance in hell. And I'll tell you. Uh, what, she's he, very unlikable and she's just nasty. And, and she's weird looking. Yeah. she's Especially on a profile. She's not going to go far at all. She'll be out of, once the primary she's an amateur. starts, she'll be done. She's an amateur. And when you. When is the first primary in January, right? Next month is the Iowa caucus. And that's when it's all going to begin. You got, you got. Yeah. You got the Iowa caucus, New Hampshire and, and South Carolina. They're trying to drag her through South Carolina because they, they're thinking that she'll do better, well in South Carolina because she was the governor there. But Good I don't deal. think that's so. That's one state. Well, I mean, so, does that matter? When, whenever South Carolina is voting, the, the way it's handled in the media is like it's like a national election. They always make such a big deal. I don't know why, but South Carolina, they always make such a big deal about South Carolina. But Nikki Haley, out of everyone that's running, she's the worst. She's worse than DeSantis. Okay, because DeSantis, DeSantis and his wife, Casey, their dream is to be like Nikki Haley, to be on the payroll of all these military industrial complex people. And the uh, but he still works for the government, right? Because he's governor, yeah. he can't do. It. She's she doesn't work for the government now, so she does. She can do it legally. He, he must he be still does. really unlikable in person because he is, he is just uh, not taken off at all. It's really surprising. I thought he'd be doing a little better. He's really fallen hard. Yeah, and I um I did got to be something about his personality. I made a YouTube short this weekend, and I've gotten a lot of comments about it. And I, I said I don't trust Dave Rubin, yeah, you know, because he he used to be with the Young Turks, and he's so behind DeSantis. What's he going to do when DeSantis is gone? And somebody uh, wrote to me, and they said uh, uh, Dave Rubin, you know, he's a good guy. You know, he supports Ron DeSantis because Florida is doing so well. I got news for you: Florida is not doing well. Florida is a mess. And it, it, we uh, we did well during COVID, better to other places. Mm-hmm. But this morning, just to let you guys know, the Florida under DeSantis, a lot of what people think of Florida has been um, a, a myth. Today, Kathy and I went to the beach by our house. Okay, and this morning on Sunday morning, yeah, it was beautiful out. Yeah, yeah, we got we you know we got beaches all around us. Lots here. of surfers. It was very windy, big waves. Yeah, it was it was nice, like eighty degree, very nice. 
But I was telling Kathy, I said, I, I remember when the, during COVID, this beach, not only all the beaches, it was shut down. Um, all the beaches were shut down in Florida. It was like the COVID. Omega Man. But we drive around. It was it was a ghost town. But the beaches, it just wasn't that they said you can't go to the beach. The beaches had police officers there, twenty four hours a day, stopping you from going to the beaches. It's so ridiculous, including the in, in, including well, including the beach we went to today in parks too. Yeah, so and it's so ridiculous because during a pandemic, people should be encouraged to go outside and get fresh air and not lock them up. Yeah, uh, in buildings where they're spreading germs. And and Ron DeSantis, okay, we have spring break is a big thing in in Florida. Ron DeSantis went on television. Warning spring breakers, this was during COVID, if they come to Florida, they're going to be arrested, okay? Ron DeSantis himself did, went on television and said yep. that. So there's there's a lot of myth and legend around Ron DeSantis in Florida. And right now in Florida, Florida's having a lot of problems. Over uh, twenty five, over 26,000 people are leaving Florida on average every month. Yeah, uh, what and a it, big change because it was the opposite just three, two, three years ago. We are about to have a housing crisis in Florida. OK, because of uh, pr- prices went up very high. Now the interest rates are high. Well, that's not his fault. The there's interest rates. there's there's all kinds of um, homeowners insurance has gone through the yeah, roof. That's the, the real a, a lot of the people that are leaving Florida are leaving because they can't afford the homeowners insurance. Homeowners insurance is so high. Um, ours went up through the roof. Yeah, everybody's um, has. Yeah. And it's not it's it's, you know, this is while well, my mom lives in a condo and hers doubled because of that collapse in Miami. Um, of that, that, that building collapse. So that that's when that happened. Um, but you know, hurricanes have always happened in Florida. But these insurance and they, they do devastate. They can devastate a whole town. They can level a whole town, especially when we're at like three feet above sea level here. Okay, <laughs> it's like or at sea level or at sea level. So like, if you live on the water or on one of these little islands just off the coast, your whole island, like Sanibel, when that one hit a year or so ago. The whole island is underwater. Remember, it destroyed the bridge and everything. And it's it's like the whole island is underwater, yeah. submerged two or three feet for days. And it destroys everything. So I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But hurricanes have been destroying Florida and the Caribbean for hundreds. They're not new. <laughs> thousands of years. Um, they're not new. So I think a lot of times these insurance companies use this as an excuse to increase the rates for everybody. But the problem is now a lot of insurance companies are leaving. So new ones come in. But people are leaving based on that alone. Uh, well, we, yeah. we know a couple and, people that, that have left and moved to Georgia. And what Kathy said about places. the condos. Okay, so they had that, that uh, condo collapse in Miami. Yeah. So what, what's happened with that is, is a lot of retirees, not just retirees, okay, a lot of other people live in condos. But, but retirees, millions of them in Florida live in condominiums. Buildings. Oh, yeah, they're everywhere. B- because of that collapse – Insurance prices on condos have doubled, like with Kathy's mother, on on people that are retired. And condos all over the state of Florida have to do all these ridiculous repairs and upgrades yep. and, and things. The to reason, get up to new codes. The reason that condo collapsed was many, but one of them that's not talked about too much. I'm not saying the building wasn't old and had problems, but they were uh, right next door to it. They were building a massive high rise. And when they build uh, in Florida... If you dig down three feet, if I took a shovel and dug five minutes in our backyard, I'd hit water. Yeah. So they put these huge posts deep into the to the limestone and all of that. Yeah, we're on limestone. And here. what what happened with that building? What really caused the collapse was driving these uh, supports for the high rise they were building next door into the ground caused a seismic event, like earthquakes. And the seismic activity is what shook that building apart. I know there were other problems with it, but that was a well. The, yeah, a, a lot of thing. the a lot of the materials they used were rusting and were cheap, and they they had reported for years uh, things falling apart in the parking garage on the below, like below the building, yeah. um, dilapidated things and rusty things, and they had been reporting it, so they ignored those things. Going on, but because so of this, it one, could have been prevented but, for sure. But because of this one mil, uh, building, millions yeah. and millions and millions of people their their homeowners and churches doubled, and their condos have to make millions of dollars each in the renovations and upgrades that they may not even need because of this one condemned building in Miami. So there's there's a lot of problems, and I could go on all day about the problems in Florida. There are a lot of problems in Florida, and DeSantis, since he's been running for president, has even been in Florida. So, no, so that's true. what happens with someone like Dave Rubin when they move to Florida, Mark Levin moved to Florida, 
they've they Dave Rubin lived in California. Mark Levin was up north. They come from these liberal Democrat areas, and they come to Florida. And Florida is the best state. I love Florida. I don't want to live in any other state but Florida. But even in Florida's worst of times, we're better than these other states. So these big mouth people like Dave Rubin and Mark Levin, they come here. They don't see all the problems that are going on because they're new to Florida. They don't have perspective, but they, they're enjoying how beautiful it is here. So this idea that Ron DeSantis is like the greatest governor ever. He was. And then he, what he did he, is three he years ago, he had basically abandoned three years ago the state as soon as he started running for president. Exactly. So there's a lot. Yeah, he's just not on top of it. Yeah. So so I, what I'm wondering is when when DeSantis drops out, what are some of these people like Dave Rubin when, and, and others going to do? Are they going to become never Trumpers or are they going to be back on the on the Trump train? I'm, I'm curious as to what they are they're going to do. It'll be interesting. Well, it'll, it'll, a lot will happen after Iowa when when Trump wins colossally there. And then what's after that? New Hampshire. What comes out? New Hampshire. Iowa? And then. Yeah. Yeah. Then once he gets that momentum and people see that, you'll start you'll start seeing that. You know, the, that's what it really depends on, I think, is is what happens in those primaries. Yeah. Yeah. But don't, oh, I wanted to share this. I, I saw this on libs of TikTok today. And it's a it's an elementary school teacher who uh, I'm not going to play the audio of it. I'll just tell you about it. But I'll, I'll read you what it says. Libs mm-hmm. of TikTok posted this video that this yeah. teacher put up. He's an elementary uh, school teacher in Illinois, and he's instructing other teachers not to line students up by boys and girls because some students might not identify with either. And he's talking about 10 year olds. So he says, if you have. Uh, your students line up as boys and girls. Some of them may identify as non-binary or something else, and they may not find themselves left without a line and feel left out. There's no way that a ten-year-old, a ten-year-old doesn't understand this stuff. No, but if, but they can be brainwashed to think it by their They're parents. Being, yeah, uh, yeah. This idea that all of a sudden, in the last year or two, there are all of these ten-year-olds and children of other ages that have all of a sudden decided that they're not a boy or a girl is yeah, absurd. Yeah, Bill Maher was saying that he he goes to dinner parties, and he said there's always five or six people that have transgender kids. Oh my goodness! And he said that's ridiculous. He said it's trendy. He said there's no way statistically that's possible. And he said, but it's a trendy thing. The parents yeah. encourage it. Yep. And a lot of these kids are going to grow up and realize, you know, how messed up this is. And it'll take years of therapy to fix, you know, but the parents encourage it, these liberal parents, because it's a trendy thing. And it's like they like to brag about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so bizarre. I mean, it's it's really just ridiculous. And I it's it's amazing to me that school teachers can go on TikTok and then and carry around in their classrooms like this. And I want, you know, our daughter's grown up, so we're not in, in the schools and we're in Florida. So even if our daughter was in school in Florida, that's one thing DeSantis has done is he's kept that in check. Yeah. But. I wonder how common it is to have these teachers with the trans flags in the classroom and doing all this stuff, or is it know. rare? I don't, I don't think it's that common. I, I don't know. I, really don't. I wonder. Thousands, millions of kids in schools. And I hope it's not. Hundreds of thousands of teachers. You know, I, I just can't imagine. I hope it's not common. Listen, we're going to take a break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. So much has happened over the weekend. We've only just scratched the surface I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. From author Stephanie Tayo comes a book that takes place in Cornwall, Ontario, where it seems that dreams can come true and life feels uncomplicated. But one young woman's world is about to be forever transformed. Love Beyond Age, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other online booksellers. In Love Beyond Age, meet Quinn. She's a determined soul with aspirations of becoming a psychologist. She shares a simple life with her dad, saving every penny for her dreams. But life has a way of throwing unexpected curveballs. Everything changes when she crosses paths with James, whose presence by the river ignites a connection neither can deny. As their university journeys begin, Quinn finds herself torn between her deepening connection with the mysterious James and her growing feelings for her competitive friend Jasper. Secrets are unveiled, revelations come to light, and Quinn discovers a shocking truth about James' hidden secret. As danger lurks on the horizon, relationships are put to the test and 
and old emotions resurface. A love triangle takes hold, pushing Quinn to the brink. She faces a choice that will shape her future and define her path. Love Beyond Age, from author Stephanie Tayo, is a story of love, secrets, and choices that will tug at your heartstrings. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, Apple Books, and other online booksellers. Order your copy right now and be transported to a world where romance is intertwined with the complexities of life. Love Beyond Age, from author Stephanie Tayo. Order your copy right now. It's time to revolutionize your skincare routine and embrace a cruelty-free and ethical approach to beauty. And you can do just that with the veganbeautycult.com. At the veganbeautycult.com, you'll discover a huge range of cleansers, shampoos, toners, lotions, and a lot more. Each product is meticulously formulated to ensure effectiveness while remaining gentle and safe for all skin types. Beyond their commitment to being vegan and cruelty-free, the veganbeautycult.com go the extra mile. Their products are thoughtfully packaged in eco-friendly materials to minimize their environmental impact, and they're completely free of harmful chemicals. And for the holiday season, don't miss out on their incredible Christmas-themed scents. Indulge in the cozy snowman. Experience the freshness of candy cane clarifying gel. Or cleanse with Rudolph's Hand and Body Wash. And there's many, many more, too. Remember, skincare is an act of self-love, and it's a way to show your love for our planet. Take care of yourself and our Earth with the veganbeautycult.com. It's time to embrace a cruelty-free and ethical approach to beauty. The TheVeganBeautyCult.com Add a splash of color to your life with the Etsy shop Popular Coloring Art. Popular Coloring Art on Etsy have a huge selection of coloring pages and wall art, and everything is available for digital download. Whether you're a kid or adult, their high-quality artwork is designed to bring out the artist in you. Popular Coloring Art on Etsy have beautiful wall art for the holidays featuring Santa and Mrs. Claus. But that's not all. They also have coloring pages for Christmas, pet lovers, vintage cars, fairies, cat lovers, dog lovers, birds, Birds, nature enthusiasts, travel buffs, and so much more. Discover unique coloring pages that will ignite your artistic creativity, no matter how young or old. Popular Coloring Art on Etsy. Online at popularcoloringart.etsy.com. That's popularcoloringart.etsy.com. High quality and unique coloring pages for kids and adults. Go to the shop right now. Explore the collection. You will be impressed. Popularcoloringart.etsy.com. Um... This Christmas, give the gift of creativity, imagination, and endless fun with B Blocks Building Blocks, available on Amazon. B Blocks Building Blocks isn't just a fun gift, but it's educational too. It's a STEM toy of 500 pieces. That's right, 500 pieces to ignite your little one's creativity. Children will be introduced to a world of colors, shapes, and designs. They'll learn to play and create with eight vibrant colors. From enhancing fine motor skills to exploring basic geometry and architecture, B Blocks Building Blocks is fun and a powerful learning tool. And they click securely together, too. They're safe and cool. Perfect for boys and girls. And this is a gift they'll cherish for years to come. B Blocks Building Blocks are available in the B Blocks store on Amazon. Just search B Blocks. B E B L O X. B Blocks Building Blocks. Because every child deserves the best. Only in the B Blocks store on Amazon. What are your child set right now? You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Don't forget, Mike Lindell, personally, okay, this is crazy. I couldn't believe when I called and he did this, but Mike Lindell with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E at MyPillow.com is offering free shipping until December 15th on all MyPillow products. And again, that's on top of whatever special that you order, okay? You get the deal, whatever deal you get using our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, plus free shipping. And that goes on all purchases at MyPillow.com through December 15th, no matter how big or small. You could order a travel my pillow or you could order a my pillow mattress or anything in between. Free shipping until December 15th. But you've got to use our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, at mypillow.com. I saw this story over the weekend. I couldn't believe this. Fresno, California. I have Fresno's in California. Fresno, yep. 
the city council raised on the flagpoles, I couldn't believe this, the Palestinian flag. Wow. Multiple. They, pu- they pulled up three of them on their flagpoles. Then they played the Palestinian, uh, I'm sorry, I, I stand corrected, one, two, three, four, five. They raised on five flagpoles, oh my goodness. Palestinian flags. Then they played the Palestinian national anthem. That's insane. Isn't it? What is that about? Why they do that? How does that happen? I, I, First off, where are all the people getting crazy. these Palestinian flags from? My goodness. I guess Amazon must be sold out so. of them. I don't know. You know, I don't think people realize what, what's going on here. You know, we, the southern border is bad, and we've been so distracted by it. Yeah. But they've been bringing in people from other countries in other ways other than the southern border, too. And a lot of it was Obama, student visas, and then they stay. They, they, maybe they never go to school or they finish school and they stay. I don't think people had any idea how, how many Palestinians and Palestinian supporters have come into this country in the past 10 years or so. No, I don't, I don't think people realize it at all. We're so focused on, you know, Venezuelans and Mexicans at the southern border and, 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 and you know, stuff like this, that we've lost sight of what a bit, that this, this is a big problem. I was just it's reading in Breitbart, McCarthy endorses Trump and says wow. he's willing to serve in his cabinet. I saw that. I could see Trump putting him in the cabinet. I could. Yeah. You know, I wonder if he'd put DeSantis in the cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. He might. Um, you know, they might. Uh, he might grovel and beg. And, and Trump's the kind of guy who would do that, I think. You know, if, Don, if, if Ron DeSantis didn't screw up, he could have been Trump's attorney general. He's a lawyer. You can't trust him. You cannot trust Ron DeSantis. So I hope he doesn't make uh, him any part of his administration at all. And this thing with Kevin McCarthy, see. He wants to be on his cabinet now. uh You know what? He's trying to be Secretary of State. Yeah. Yeah. How about about Secretary of uh, Losers? No, I'm serious. I think that's what he's going to try to be. Secretary of State. What if he he wants to run as his running mate? Do you think Trump would do that? No he way. likes Kevin McCarthy. That's no a poss- way. That is a possible VP he got, right he, there. No, he was part of the plot to get rid of him as speaker. Trump. <laughs> Politics is make strange bedfellows, you know. Well, what, what Kevin McCarthy is doing is crazy. Now, it came out again from Laura Loomer. Laura Loomer's had a lot of news this week. I guess yeah. everyone's talking to Laura Loomer this week, all her sources. Laura Loomer on Saturday... Maybe it was Friday, either Friday or Saturday. Laura Loomer said that there is an expose coming out about Matt Gates in the next couple of weeks that's worse than anything they had on Santos. Okay, what is that? So what does that mean? It's like it's going to be true. I don't you know, know. They're working on destroying him. You know so that. they yeah. want him out. So um, he's the next one they want to expel. Well, Kevin McCarthy is leaving the House at the end of the month. And that's going to leave us with only a two-seat majority in the House with Kevin McCarthy gone. Yeah, and if they get if, rid of um, if this thing comes out, of, yeah, if this if this expose comes out about Matt Gates, and it's as bad as Loomer says, and it's true, because oh I, I I I don't know what's in it. I don't know, and I, I don't know. I can't say it's not true because I don't know what's going right. to be in it. Um, I hope it's not true because I love Matt Gates. Yeah, but it, if they get rid of Matt Gates, we have a one-seat majority. <laughs> That's not really much of a majority. I mean, no. I know it's still a majority, but it's not much of one. That's pretty scary to me. I don't think they should be expelling people at all. I mean, they didn't ex- expel uh, the Democrat. What's his name, Menendez? No, he's uh, still there. You know, I don't, I don't think they should expel anybody. Jamal I think Bowman with think, the fire alarm? Yeah, I, I think that's a horrible thing they're doing. I think let the voters decide I who they want. And, uh, but they're doing it, obviously, to help the Democrats. Uh, you know, it's so corrupt. I mean, if in, you did in, something, in it's so corrupt. you know, if you did something like commit murder, right? And we're well, on trial, that'd be a, Menendez. <laughs> yeah. Menendez or if they find like, you know, literally, you know, bodies in your basement. Menendez has basically been a spy for these Egyptians, and he's still in the Senate. Crazy. So, yeah, I mean, so come on. So Look why at Eric Swalwell? Yeah, he was sleeping with a Chinese spy. You have Diane Feinstein. She was a senator, but she was, you know, there's a lot of things these people do. Exactly. And the Republicans are a bunch of rhinos. That's why people are fed up with them. They don't protect the party. They don't they don't do what's right. Correct. And they they're helping the Democrats half the time. So listen to this, you know, back to California. So they got the Palestinian flags up right at at, at the Fresno City Council meeting in California. 
Listen to this. This is in the Gateway Pundit. Across California's Oakland Unified School District on Wednesday, Mm -hmm. teachers took part in a teach-in about the Palestinian cause, which used anti-Israel, anti-Semitic materials. They had a book called um, Palestine, uh, a Palestinian alphabet book. Our schools have become indoctrination Worse than the colleges. Really yeah. have become indoctrination facilities. Organizers for the Gaza to Oakland teach-in promoted the event in a video in late November. Uh, in the video, uh, a speaker shares those with an interest in bombing a civilian population are terrified of people. It goes on and on and on. But it's basically Palestinian um, propaganda in the schools. You know, this propaganda that we have in the colleges has always been there. And that's not good. But at least they were very young, but adults. And most college kids, they get exposed to all that liberal crap and they become liberals while they're in college. And then they get out and get jobs and have responsibility and then they wake up. When you take young kids, like this Palestinian book they're using is for like third, fourth, fifth graders, okay? Yeah. When you take kids that are that age, that is the point in your life when your worldview is shaped, even though you're very young and you don't realize it. That's when your worldview is shaped. That's why Obama, he spent those years in Indonesia that has the largest and Muslim population you, in the world. And that's why his worldview is so whack. Yeah, little kids really look up to their teachers. I mean, oh, yes. They'll believe a teacher over their parent a lot of times. There were yeah. times Emily would come home and say something and, and you'd be like, that's not true. Yeah, but Mrs. So and so says. Yeah. And they really, you know, when you're in elementary school, especially, you really look up to your teacher and and see them as somebody that, would never lie to you. And uh, I just read this article. This is crazy. I'm just looking on the Daily Mail. It's a new article about the villages. I saw that. The swinging 60s. Fascinating video reveals the truth about the world's most infamous retirement community, the villages, as aging residents lift the lid on tales of swingers, parties, black market, Viagra, and rampant STDs. Yeah. That's a, the villages is in Florida. That's a huge retirement yeah. Area and huge, it's, and it's it's um and it's a conservative, it's conservative. You know this thing about the villages. Anyone who runs for president has to go to the villages and, yeah. and suck up to them. Um, that's one of the worst parts of Florida to live in. It's in the middle. It's 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 little. It's central Florida, but it's almost northern Florida. But it's central Florida. It's hot. It's it's far from the oceans. Yeah. So they they have a lot of bugs and mosquitoes. It is in a part of Florida that actually gets cold during the winter. I mean, really cold. Yeah. Not like it gets like in the 20s and 30s regularly. Where we're at right now, it's like I said, it's 81 degrees, 82 yeah, degrees. Yeah, but we have a nice breeze from the ocean. We're only like 10, 15 minutes from the if water. The villages, I know, if you ever see it on television or online, it looks super cool. That is one of the worst parts of Florida to be in. Mm-hmm. Because the nasty weather, and they're basically in the middle of the swamp. Well, and apparently they have a lot of STDs now. So yeah, that's true. So that's another negative, else. other than being the worst part of Florida. Golly. That's and, crazy. And, and people in the villages, the ones that I've— It's almost cult-like. Yeah. The, the ones in—the the people from the villages I've come in contact with are very snooty. This might be a selling point for them. <laughs> might get a lot of people to want to go there. Oh, because there's swingers so much and, swingers and stuff? Yeah. Interesting. I have no interest in uh, living in that part of Florida or going to, to the villages. Is it expensive there? There's, they have different levels like anything else. There's like Yeah, you, you buy know, like a home, but it's like a community. I don't know community. what they're starting at now, but it's, it, it, there's all different levels there. It's, yeah. it, if you go and look at it online, it looks like the coolest place to live, but you do not want to live in that part of Florida. No, you it's like an Ocala or something. It's really hot. And- if, you know, Trump's trial in Florida— the the uh, Mar-a-Lago classified documents trial is going to be in Fort Pierce, Florida. Mm-hmm. Th- that town, when you go north of Fort Pierce in Florida, you're no longer in the tropics. Okay, we're in the subtropics in Florida. But when you go north of where Trump's trial is going to be, which is Fort Pierce, mm-hmm. you're no longer in the tropics, and the weather is dramatically different. Yeah, the trees are different. Everything's different. It's like Georgia. It's, yeah, when you get north of Orlando, like in Ocala and that area, it's much more hilly. I don't know who would want to live in totally the villages. Here it's totally flat, but but yeah. when I used to drive to Tallahassee, like when you get to Ocala and north, it is very hilly. Um, it's very different looking. But I noticed, you know, this this story. I read that story about the villages, 
And I, I'm what I'm wondering about is, and it's a big story in, in the Daily Mail, so it's all over the media today yeah. about how there's swingers, there's all this sex and stuff going on there. And I think that the villages leak that out to get publicity to get more people to move there because <laughs> I'm just saying, I you don't know, know. because because of interest rates, you never know. It's hard to sell homes. It's hard to you know, and and people sometimes want to sell their home and move. It's hard for them to sell. It's hard for buyers to buy. But yeah. if, if they get th- – so I think that they put sex this – Sex sells. I, that's exactly right. I think they floated this sex story out there to try to get people to want to buy and move to the villages. I really do. Most of the – I've realized this with the local news too. Most of the articles you see are like paid advertisements. Even on national news. Yeah. Most of the stuff you see on the news or in print, a lot of it is is like a paid ad. Well, that's that's what I you wonder. With, I mean, that's how they fund these well, these uh, these uh, periodicals. See, and things. that that's what I wonder with uh, Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy, the pharmaceutical industry is like the one of the largest advertisers mm-hmm. in national media, so they have a lot of influence. So between that and he's a billionaire, I I think it's safe to assume that either through his own money or the pharmaceutical money, he bought his way into this television coverage. The first time I really. Yeah. Not the first time I heard of him, but the first time I saw him discussed as a serious person was on Fox. Yeah. And I remember thinking at the time, he bought his way on Fox. Well, yeah, he, he bought obviously. his way on Fox somehow. He's doing, a lot of yeah. people that are on there um, are are paying being paid. Well, like know, Nikki, them like to Nikki be, Haley, to be interviewed. like Fox with Nikki Haley pushing Nikki Haley. I promise you that the military industrial complex somehow is. Fox is making money on pushing Nikki Haley. Sure. Through advertising or something. Exactly. There's no, something. I think there's all kinds of things like that yeah. going on. That's, that's how the, the world revolves around corrupt companies. Money makes the world go You know, around. if you go and watch these movies like Alien and Aliens, in the future corporations run the world. Yeah. They do. It's just not open. Right? Yeah, right. It's, it's like in secret that corporations are running the world. Yeah. You know, and it's really that way. All these people, when they, they – you were talking about Alex Jones and the globalist. <clears throat> that's a big thing with mm-hmm. – it, it is globalist, but it's more corporatist. The, the, the corporations are international, yep. and the, it, it's globalism, but I think it's more the corporatist mm-hmm. than globalism. You understand? Does yeah. that make sense to you yeah. guys? I don't know if that quite makes sense. It's all about money. Yeah. Everything's <clears throat> about money. Yeah. The root yeah. of all evil. That's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah corrupts everyone it's always oh, yeah. been that way and oh yeah uh if you read uh ecclesiastes king solomon the smartest king talks about that all the time about uh, yeah how corrupt man is and jesus talks about it. it's it's even back then it's it's never well, going to change be- because of the way things are now like you look at the nafta deal like how bad that was and trump fixed it that was one of the things also that turned them against him is because that deal was set up in such a screwed up way on purpose. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't set up unfair to us by accident or out of stupidity. Right. It was done by design of the corporations that are the donors. Okay, they went all these things this way. So globalism is corporatism. Is that the word corporatism? I yeah. guess so. I don't know, but I do know this: that globalism is about big multi international companies making endless amounts of revenue streams off of us. And when they, when they lose control of the narrative, it becomes more difficult. Like, like I'll tell you, this, this war in Ukraine, right? If we didn't have the internet, if we did not have the internet and we only had mainstream traditional media, public opinion in this country would be in favor of the war in Ukraine. The last war that they were able to sell us which was a, a bogus war, was the WMDs in Iraq. They sold that war because mm-hmm. – I, I know the internet was around then, but, it, but we, didn't have the, we, we didn't have the ability to control the narrative yet. Social media wasn't what it is now, and, and it was still kind of new, and it was still growing, and plus there was all this war thing with after 9-11. But after, after the, the lie of the WMDs in Iraq yep. – the, the, that was another thing with the military industrial complex. That was the last war they were successfully able to sell us. They're trying, they've been trying to sell us this Ukraine war. They haven't been able to do it. They've really been pushing hard to make us sympathetic to the, the Palestinians. No one's yeah. buying that, you know, and they're just, they're not, the, the, the globalist, corporatist, military industrial complex are not able 
to sell their crap because they've lost control of the narrative. Well, they've gone too far. They're asking for too much, too fast, and it's affecting people at home. Uh-huh. And uh, they're tired of it. They're tired of, That's of, right. of money being spent, and they can't afford to buy food. And they've just taken advantage of everybody. That's I really right. feel they've taken advantage of 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 us mm-hmm. and a lot of people absolutely feel that way. well listen we're out of time for today i just dropped the mic but grabbed it as it was falling we're out of time for today we'll be back next time i'm brian craig always joined by my wife and co-host kathy thanks for listening